This is going to be a slightly different type of video than you may be used to from me as I'm going to be doing a voiceover post-flight. So here we are. I'm going to set up the uh, APU in the Cessna Citation Longitude. It's in a cold and dark state and we'll get everything configured as well as entering a flight plan into the flight uh, computer. So I'm starting up the APU now Cause so we can get some power. Okay. And that was the audi audible confirmation from the Garmin system that things were okay. So the APU is starting up. Let's turn on the batteries. And let me pull up the ATIS information for this airport. I'm at uh, Big Bear, California. Big, uh, it's in the mountains, and it's a small little runway. So the altimeter is 3015. At least the barometer, barometric pressure is 3 3 point or 30.15. So I'm setting that. Uh, as you can tell, uh, we are at an elevation of about 6700 feet. And that this will be our departure airport. It's L35, I believe is the is the airport code. L35 Lima 35 or more appropriately Lima 35. <laughs> so I just entered in the ATIS uh, frequency for the destination which is Orange County John Wayne Airport which is KSNA Kilo Sierra November Alpha. That way I'll have their ATIS information and the uh, barometric pressure as we get closer to them. So I'm just setting up uh, some of the primary flight display options. And now let's go ahead and uh, put in our ILS approach. Okay, so I'm gonna choose the runway 20R for ILS, which is right there. And Sager is my transition that I typically use, so that's good. Let's load and activate this guy. double-check that everything is there. There we are. There are our altitudes. Pretty standard ILS approach with the step-down uh, altitudes uh, between the waypoints. And there's only like three waypoints basically in, in, in this uh, procedure. So what did I do there? Okay, I just turned on the, the DIC, which I probably won't need, but I like doing it, especially up at these uh, elevations. So let's turn on the flight director. Let's prepare the autopilot. Uh, let's set our altitude. Flight plan's gonna call for 8,500 feet. That'll clear us with the mountains around here. And I'll set us up at 250 uh, knots uh, as far as the uh, our airspeed. Let's zoom out and see what we got here. Actually, let's zoom in and, and see where we are. Okay, we're at the end of the the uh, parking area, which is good. We don't have far to go to uh, to get on the runway. And that's our flight. It's going to be a, a pretty short flight.
In fact, airtime is less than 30 minutes. So let's see what we have here. Let's uh, let's set our com. Let's, I'm going to check the Unicom frequency here for this airport. It's an uncontrolled uh, airport, and I like to bring that up just in case there's any information that is broadcast that I need to know. And then let's set up our ILS frequency on NAV1, which is 111.75. Okay. We'll keep it on FMS for right now until we get to approach mode, and I'll switch over to NAV1. Okay, let's uh, get these engines started. Let's start with engine number two. That's okay. Got the starter going, and now we're firing this engine up, number two. And let's we have to wait till the the uh, N2 percentage gets gets stable, as well as uh, get some oil pressure in there. Let's see if we can hear this thing firing up. Engine number two on the right side. Starboard side, I should say. And let's set the camera up on the port side for engine number one. We can maybe try to see if we can watch the blades, the fan blades spin up. Okay, there's no activity there, which is expected. Let's see what our readings look like. All right, we have a steady N2 and some oil pressure. So let's uh, close that cover, the cover guard. Let's start engine number two, or I'm sorry, number one. We have no oil pressure yet, but uh, you can see it spinning, spinning up. Okay, the oil PSI right there is slowly coming alive and heating up. So that looks good. Let's uh, turn off that starter and close the uh, plastic button guard. Now we can turn the APU off since the engines are started. We don't need it anymore. We can turn off the generator. And let's get some uh, taxi lights going here, as well as a couple of other lights. And let's put a little light down here on the, on the instrument panel. There we go. We don't need too much. It's a nice, bright day out. Checking, checking everything over. All right, that engine's up and running. Let's kind of just take a quick, quick bird's eye view of where we are. We're at the end of this parking area. We don't have far to go to, to get to the runway. So let's call this guy over here to give us a little just a little pushback till we can we can uh, taxi on our own after that. I don't know what I was doing here. Just checking a few things, I guess. You know, waiting for the, uh, the marshaler to push us back. I guess I should release the parking brake, or else he's going to be pushing pretty hard. There we go. I had him turn me around. I'm heading over to to this taxiway, which is right, basically right at the end of the runway. So let's let's mosey on this way here. OK, 
Okay, we're going to hold short of the runway while I do some last minute checks. Let's put the parking brake on so we don't accidentally go out there. Uh, flaps one. Now let's turn on our landing lights and turn off our taxi lights. Everything is looking good. We're all set to uh, to do some autopiloting once we get up. So let's do it. Let's position ourselves here on, on the runway. I want to thank you guys for, for watching this. Uh, and before we actually take off, got a little business to take care of. Here we go. All right, we're back. Okay, we got a steady 50% throttle, both engines steady. Togo position and we're off. The the rotate speed suggested by the FMS is a little low. It always shows, you know, I think I forgot what it was, 120 or something like that, but it's always been low for me. And when I pull up and rotate, I always get stall warnings and I'm not, you know, going up at a steep angle. So I'm gonna let, let it go here to about one was at 140. All right, so we got like a, what is that, uh, 15 degrees, 10, 10, 12, 15 degrees, so no stall warning, which is good. Although I did forget to turn off the, the main plates, as you can see the other other airplanes in the, in the area straight ahead I have their name plates being displayed. We'll turn that off in just a minute. I, I, I typically never have those turned on. So let me get this thing into auto throttle. There we go. So we are auto throttling and let's go into nav mode with the autopilot. That is turned on. So it's starting to turn us toward the, the path. So right now I'm gonna take a quick, quick jump into the settings and turn off those nameplates. Traffic, show traffic nameplates off. All right, so save it and go back oh, all right I apologize for that uh, that little interruption so here we go flying over Big Bear Lake very very beautiful area it's uh, you know, the local ski mountains in the winter time to to here in Southern for those of us here in Southern California a different view of those mountains. Our route is going to take us over the San Bernardino International Airport, just beyond these mountains here. And from there we'll pass over the Prado Dam, and then over the local uh, Orange County Mountains on our approach into Orange County John Wayne Airport. So I'm trying to adjust my airspeed down to 250, it's kind of tricky sometimes. The little button, the little dial. Especially in this aircraft, it's easy to accidentally switch the you know the speed mode from FMS to to, to manual. Got it. Got it. 250. That'll be our, our cruise speed for for most of the flight.
there'll be a timeline down in the in the uh, description of this video so you can skip around to different uh, you know, places within the video so you don't have to be bored if, if you do get bored easily so check that out if you want to skip to other parts all right so there's the San Bernardino mountain range that we just uh, took off from Big Bear Mountain is right in the back back there and now we're down into the the more you know, built up and developed sections And the reason for our 8,500 foot altitude was to get over those mountains. And there's a mountain range coming up, local, I think it's Saddleback Mountain Range. I'm not sure of the exact mountain range, but you can see it straight ahead. Uh, that's a bit lower. I think the, the uh, approach plates say to, to stay at least 3,500 feet. So we definitely don't want to get below 3,500 feet until we pass over them and then we can uh, begin our uh, approach descent. By the way, this flight was like Saturday, this past Saturday, what day was that? November 14th, using live weather and live traffic. So I'm going to switch over to ATIS of our destination airport. So I can set the barometer. So I'll suggest a barometer. Landing and departing runway 20 left and runway 20 right. And I don't know what I was thinking here at the time, but I'm, I'm increasing and I should be decreasing the, the barometer reading. Alright, I just figured it out, so let's spin it back the other way. Three zero zero seven. I believe this one is it. Okay. All right. Let's switch away from that ATIS, or else it'll just keep broadcasting nonstop. That body of water is called the Santa Ana River, and it uh, goes up to the Prado, Prado Dam, which is straight ahead. We're going to pass right over the dam. Uh, the Santa Ana River also goes all the way to the Pacific Ocean through Orange County. So let's check our altitudes here, and let's kind of zoom out or zoom in, I should say, on the, on the navigation display. I'm going to bring down the speed a bit. Whenever you turn back the throttle, be it you know, manual pulling back on the throttle or adjusting the, the throttle, uh, more than 30, if there's more than a 30% uh, 
uh, decrease in the uh, throttle. The landing gear announcement uh, happens. So then once you once you settle into your speed, it goes away. So the dam itself is just just in front of us. It's kind of at that corner. And you can see where it gets really straight edge right there on the concrete, uh, right in the, in the sun's reflection. That's, that is the dam. And this particular flight plan keeps us clear of the mountains to the left. Those are the ones where you, you know, have to be careful not get below uh, more like 4,000 or 3,500. Definitely higher, a little bit higher as you, if you were to go further, further that way. But we are good to go here. Plenty, plenty of clearance. So I've decreased landing the speed gear. a little bit more, so landing let me uh, gear. increase landing the flaps gear. by one. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Once we get to the Sager waypoint, the next uh, altitude step down is to the Snake waypoint, which is 3,400 feet. So I've got the uh, the uh, altitude set for that, which I think we're just passing over. So the next step down is 2800. So there's, we set that to 2800 and set the flight level change. So now we're descending to that, to that altitude. See the airport ahead. See the lights blinking right up there. Oh, and here's a. Since I have live traffic turned on, I see an airliner in front of us. Directly in front of us. There it is. And he's coming in. That's. I guess we're getting kind of close. Hope I don't get into his. His wake. So I set the altimeter down to 2,200 feet now, which is our next waypoint, which is Lemon. And there is where we should intercept the the uh, glide slope and, and localizer. Well, actually, we are we are locked in on the localizer now. So I'm just waiting for the glide slope. This is where I realized that I should be at 2,200 feet right now, and or even below that. But I'm still at 2,300, so I think I just overshot the the glide slope because it's nowhere to be found on there. It's, it's searching for it by the. You can see on the enunciator the the GS is in white, which means it's Landing armed gear. but not Landing gear. Landing gear. not engaged. Landing. 
So let me slow down some more. Let me go down to 135. Also with this aircraft, the the suggested I'm putting in full flaps, by the way. But the suggested approach speed is 149. That happens on any flight, regardless. So I think that's a bug as well. And I found that to be a little too too quick, especially on smaller smaller uh, runways. In case you didn't notice, I just disabled the autopilot. I'm going to fly this thing by myself because we missed the glide slope. Uh, otherwise, it would just keep going and not descending. So I'm uh, I'm still in auto throttle, but I'm uh, controlling the, the the altitude and, and direction. So we're just passing 800 feet. I'm trying to keep keep myself lined up. Got slight tailwind, seven knots, and I'm at 140 knots of my speed. I'm going to end up slowing it down a little bit more. Because that, that works best on this plane, at least for me. You know, I try to, like I said, try to keep it down around 135. All right, here we come. We got two white, two red. Now we have four red. So a little bit low, but that's fine. All right, idle. Floats a bit. And rear wheels down. Front gear down. Let's keep it going straight. Got the reverse thrust going. Reverse thrust is off. Exit on this taxiway here. We touched down about 130 miles an hour, or, uh, 130 knots. And you know, it, if I use the recommended 149 knots, it seems like I bounce all the time. So I think I found my sweet spot landing speed. So let's uh, stop right here momentarily and tidy up. So let's put the parking brake so I don't go rolling accidentally somewhere. Flaps clean. Let's turn on our taxi lights and turn off our landing lights. Okay. Release the parking brake. Now let's find somewhere to park. So this is the John Wayne Orange County Airport, KSNA, Kilo Sierra November Alpha. I consider it my home base since I live, what, 15 minutes or so from here. Of course, with the fly simulator, I can make any airport my home base, but I'm trying to keep it real. I guess I should speed up a little bit. It could take us forever if I continue going that slow. As you can tell, this is not one of the handcrafted airports. I'm hoping one day someone will take that initiative. But although it's not a handcrafted airport, it's it's plausible. I mean, I, I've seen worse. I mean, they modeled the, the terminal building and the gates. They, they look definitely plausible. Control tower, it's not, that's not exactly what it looks like in real life. But uh, again, I've, I've seen worse that just looks like a, I mean, some that looks like a, I don't know, paper tower roll or something sticking out of the ground. So at least that one has some windows and 
things. Oh, let me get out of the way of this band. Okay. Alright, I see two other business jets in front of me. Let's see if I can join them. Too close to those, wherever that is. I think that's is that fuel. Let me turn here. Okay, let's, let's see if I can't move up and nose right up to that white line. Hmm, a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah, that works. All right, let's try to gracefully shut this thing down. Parking brake. Let's turn off our lights, including the overhead panel or the panel lights and flight director is off. Just set that to home just for the heck of it. And let's open up these button guards and shut off the, the engines. There's number one, there's number two. Close the guards. Turn off the de-icing. And let's shut down all the electrical Oops, didn't need to test that, but there we go. Everything pretty much is shut down. Let's do a quick bird's eye view of, of the airport. See, the terminal building doesn't look too bad, the gates. As always, thank you for watching and safe travels.